It's a special, special. I'll wait till everybody finished fellowshipping. It's all right. That's a good. That's a good problem. Y'all done? You can keep talking. It's okay. That's a good thing. Amen. I love it. Amen. 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 Well, hey, we are so excited tonight. We're going to have a great time. You know, God is just uh, wonderful, and, and I'm just so privileged tonight. You know, yesterday, I want to just let you know, yesterday I was riding my bike. I've been trying to get up to 20 miles and uh, uh, a day. Uh, and so yesterday I was riding, I got about 15 miles and I got a flat tire. And so I found out that's kind of common in road bikes and I haven't been doing this that long. So it's all right. It's no big deal. The best thing is don't worry about a flat tire. You just got to know how to fix a flat tire when you're out on the road, you know? So I fixed the flat tire and I thought to myself, you know, there are a lot of people, there's a lot of people that on the road of life, they've got some flat tires, and maybe that flat tire has held you back for a little while. You know, I, I, I got a flat tire, you know, and so I just got off the bike and I put a new tire on. It took me a little while, but I put the new tire on. It wasn't easy. It was the back tire, which makes it a little more difficult, but I did it. It was my first time putting a new spare on. And, um, and you know, and I thought as I was putting it on, God spoke to me. He says, you know, there's a lot of they got flat tires. And, you know, my, my bike, it had a flat tire, but you know what? It wasn't broken. The forks weren't bent. The rims weren't bent. The frame wasn't cracked. It wasn't a broken bike. It just had a flat tire. Maybe perhaps you're here today and you've got a flat tire. You've had a flat tire. You feel like, man, I'm just sitting on the side of the road. Maybe you ran over a couple of thorns in life. Maybe you've ran into a few things that caused you to lose, lose some air in your, in, your, in your tires, if I may. But, you know, I want to let you know that it's time to get up. Jesus has a spare. Amen. He's the God of second chances and third chances and fourth chances. The Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times and seven times he gets back up. That tells me the only place a believer ought to be is up or getting up. Amen. That's where a believer ought to be. He's either up or getting up. Amen. There's no on the side of the road there, you know. And uh, so I want to encourage you. You know what's so cool is that while I was on the side of the road, some other uh, bi bikers, you know, uh, road bikers rode by, some cyclists rode by. And as they rode by, they said, hey, you okay? You all right? You need help? You know, I was like, oh, I got it. I got it. You know, but what's so cool is that, you know, just like that in the Christian life, there are people that are going to go by you and they're going to say, hey, are you all right? Do you need help? You know, and we got to make sure we don't have enough pride that says, no, I'm fine. You know, I knew how to fix the tire and I wanted to do it myself, but I didn't have enough pride to say, no, I need help. They would have stopped and helped me. And I knew that. Amen. And so I want to encourage you in your life that, that there's going to be times where you might get a thorn in your tire. There might be some flat tires. Maybe you got a little bit low air and you need to get you need to get filled up. Amen. I got this little pump. It's it's a it's for my tire and it's a little takes a little CO2 cartridge, you know, and I put that little cartridge in there, and I fire it off, man, and it's powerful. It's like, psh, and it's like in five seconds, my tire, not even five seconds, in two seconds, my tire's inflated. Jesus wants to come with his CO2, you know, and he wants to just fire you up, man. Amen. He wants to get you going, amen, in the things of God, amen. I was trying to think of what can I say with CO2, Christ, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll figure it out later, amen. Omega, yeah, I don't know, amen, I'll think of something. But hey, guess what, I have a very special announcement. We have a wonderful, wonderful guest speaker that's going to be ministering tonight. She is so awesome, I love her with all my heart, amen. I chase her all over the house all the time. 28 years, I'm still in love with her today as like when I first met her. Amen. I tell you. But, but I will say, last week, I was in the bathroom, and she put her hand underneath the door and said, hello. <laughs> She's all embarrassed now. Amen. But, you know, I'm just so blessed that, uh, that my favorite teacher is going to come and she's going to minister a word for you tonight. Amen. And I'm so thankful that she's coming up here. So let's give a warm welcome to Pastor Heather. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, so on Sunday, he was subtracting years from his age, and today he's adding years to our marriage. We've been married 25 years, not 28. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> okay, praise God. <clears throat> Well, I am super blessed to be here. I never uh, take for granted the opportunity to minister the word of God. I come very humbly before you and totally dependent on the spirit of God. And so let's go ahead and just open in prayer. Father, we just thank you for tonight, Lord. I thank you for every precious person that you've brought into this place, Lord. I thank you for your love for them. I thank you for your plans for them, God. And I thank you that tonight, Lord, will be a word that you speak to each and every heart, God. God, you know how to speak to us as individuals, God, right where we're at, God, going through whatever the things that we're going through right now, Lord. And I just pray, Father, that you would have your perfect way. Holy Spirit, I completely surrender and submit myself to you now, and I just say, have your way. Every word that comes out of my mouth, Mouth, Lord, let it be led by you. And God, may your word accomplish that which you've sent it to do today. And God, we just give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. So Pastor Tom opened the service, which he's not used to doing. And at first I was like, what is he talking about? Prayer. But it's interesting because it goes with my message. The Holy Spirit is so faithful because I'm I've entitled my message today, to know him is to love him, and to know him is to trust him. And the reason I want to minister on this, well, first of all, I, I was asked to minister at a conference, and that was the title of our conference was to know him is to love him. But I took it a step further, to know him is to love him. But when you know him, how many of you know you can trust him? You can trust him because you know him. I don't know if you realize, but it's possible to do all kinds of religious things, to come to church regularly, even to read the word sometimes, to go from conference to conference, to read all kinds of theological books, but still lack that intimacy that we need with God. And I can tell you that from experience. I will share later on as I'm ministering my story, but I figure I've been serving God 27 years, and just like the Bible says there's no sin or temptation uncommon to man, if you're going through anything in this place, and the devil's on you, condemning you, making you feel like you're the only one and you're so evil and you're so wicked. Oh no, you got millions of people on the planet in good company with you. And I tell you what, just like I was in this place in my Christian walk, I guarantee you there's others that have experienced what I'm going to be talking about. So when we truly know God, we will be able to trust him. Why? Because we're walking with him each and every day. We're talking with him. We're, we're experiencing him. We're putting our situations that we go through into his hands, and we're trusting him, and we're seeing him come through time and time again. So we're seeing his provision. We're experiencing his presence, his power, every day of our lives, I hope. If we're walking with him, if we're truly born again and in a living, vibrant relationship with the true and the living God, we're not serving a dead God. God is alive and he wants a relationship with us more than anything. He wants an intimate relationship with you. So my scripture today is found in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. It says, but let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness and justice and righteousness in the earth. Let him who glories glory in this, that he knows me, that he understands me. That word knows in the Greek means to know by experience. It's not head knowledge. We can get messed up in that area. It is to know from experience. So like I said, knowing God comes from walking with him every day. Not allowing anything in this life to get in the way. How many of you know there's all kinds of distractions that want to stop us from having a relationship with Jesus Christ? There's all kinds of things that want to get our attention. There's sin. There's unforgiveness. There's all kinds of things. That's why when I open the service many times, I say, God, if there's anything in the way, Lord, let's remove it now because, God, I want all that you have. I want to receive everything that you have. So we've got to continually remove those things. We know when distractions come our way and they're taking us from God. We just have to do something about it. We have to care enough about that relationship protect it, to guard it with everything that we are. So when we know God and we trust his love, guess what? We also trust his care for us. We know that he loves us and we know that he's able to take care of us. We reject fear and unbelief because we have, our faith has been tested. And like Pastor Tom says, tested faith is trusted faith. We go through things in life and many times it's to grow us. It's to, to draw us closer to God and to help us understand God better. You know, we've talked about that scripture that says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
we're familiar with that scripture. And many times we think, oh yeah, that's how, I, that's how I build up my faith. But that scripture, that chapter is all about salvation uh, faith. Faith comes by hearing. It's talking about faith in Jesus Christ. Comes by hearing the word of God. When you hear the good news of the gospel, you have faith in Jesus Christ. It's the same chapter that talks about how beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news. It's all about salvation faith. Faith comes when you hear the word, but faith grows when you exercise it. That's what we do when we are in a relationship with God every single day and we're trusting him with the situations in our life. Every circumstance, every season of our life, we're putting those situations and we're putting our trust in him. We go through some heavy stuff. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. But when we give those things to God and we say, God, this is too much for me. I can't do it. I need you to get involved. Guess what? God begins to enter in. You know, I was just talking with one of my girlfriends, and she was ready to give up on her marriage. She's got children. I do not want her to quit on her marriage, but she was just feeling like she was done. And she told me the other day, she just woke up, and she said, Jesus, I need you. That's all she could pray. She said, Jesus, I need you. That's all I know, God. I need you because I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to give up. I need you. So if you want this marriage to work, God, you've got to help me. And I love that. I tell people when I'm angry, I tell God I'm angry. When I'm hurt, I tell God, oh, God, that hurt. That person just hurt me. That person just upset me. God, forgive me. I just kind of had some bad thoughts in my mind right now because that person was mean to me. I did that the other day. I wanted to come back at somebody, and God just kind of, you know, gave me a little, don't, no, don't go there. And I said, God, forgive me, but that person was so mean. Why are people so mean? (laughs) Tom. (laughs) So I want to challenge you. (laughs) that that day-to-day faith, that faith that stands when it doesn't make any sense, that faith that stands and keeps on standing, no matter if we see God moving or not, that comes from a vibrant living relationship with God. Faith grows when we grow close to Jesus. That is how we grow our faith. We share our heart and our dreams with him. We tell him when we're upset. Like I said, we share our sorrows with him. We seek him. We seek his word. And guess what? We see him come through for us time and time again. I almost see it like notches on our belt. It's like when you're going through a trial, you can say, oh, no, devil, because I remember when God came through for me here. I remember when he came through for me here. I remember when he came through for me here. You lying devil, you get behind me. I don't know if you guys have seen War Room, but we need to start making some declarations and declaring what the word of God says. But guess what? In that war room, they spent time in the presence of God. So just like a muscle, work it and it will grow strong. Amen? You know, I've been, for those of you that don't know, I've been exercising a lot. And uh, I was thinking about with a weight, you know, we exercise. But how many of you know I won't see any results if I give up when I get tired? I'm not going to see results. Oh, this is hard, man. Forget it. I don't think my muscle is going to grow. But how about if I push past that uncomfortable stage where I'm feeling tired? It doesn't make any sense to believe God because the way things look, it just doesn't make sense to believe God. I don't see anything happening at all. But God, I'm going to keep believing because God, I know you. I know you. I've walked with you. I've seen you, God. I'm tired though, Lord. I feel tired. You know, I've been, I've been believing God for, for my health, but, but I still feel really sick, Lord. And, and the doctor's report, it hasn't changed, God. But God, I know your word says by your stripes I'm healed. And Lord, I've been believing for my finances, but I've been, I've been without a job and it's getting so hard, God. I don't see anything in sight, God. It's been a long time. I see nothing happening, God. I don't know what to do, God. I'm getting tired, God. I don't know what to do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Oh, but praise God, I got the family of God. I've got the family of God. Help me, sisters. Help me. In Jesus' name, amen. See, so I have my family. I love the family of God because as we're getting tired, we can call upon our family. And guess what? They come and they lift our arms for us. They help us. And even though I'm tired, we're going to believe together. They're going to link their hearts with mine in faith together and begin to speak the word over my life when I get weary. You know, I've been believing God for my children. God, they're living in ways that are contrary to you, Lord. God, the ways they're, they're living in their situation in life, Lord, it scares me, God. It scares me. I'm, I'm concerned, Lord, for not just their physical health, God, but their mental health. And God, I'm getting tired. I've been believing for a long time, Lord. But you know what? I'm going to stand upon your word, God. Your word says that my children shall return to their own borders, that you have seen my faith and it shall be rewarded, that my children will return from the land of the enemy. I thank you, God, that my children don't walk in the path of the ungodly or hear the counsel of the ungodly, Lord, but they are like trees planted by the rivers of water. 
They shall bring forth their fruit in due season, God. God, you're faithful. I thank you, God, that great is their peace and undisturbed composure. You work it. Even though you're tired, you don't quit. Because guess what? That is when our faith grows. And guess what? The next time a trial comes, you've got some strength for that next fight. You're ready to take on that next situation. Because I saw God come through here. And I saw God through, come through here. Every single time we walk with him and we trust him and we put those situations, situation after situation after situation, and we see that our God is not just able, he's not just capable, he is faithful. He is a faithful God and he will come through and all things work together for good for those that love God and are called according to his purpose. All things, all things. You may not think you got the answer you wanted, but I tell you what. Your father loves you. He knows what is best for you. And the devil will try to make you believe that God has failed you. He's a liar. God is working all things together for your good. He is at work behind the scenes. He's at work when you can't see him. He's at work when you're tired and you're weary and you want to quit. But my friends, don't quit. You get tired. You call your brothers and sisters. We're going to surround you. That's why. We have those prayer cards because we want to lift your arms. We want to help you when you're tired. I've been in places before where I am just too weak to pray. I'm weary. I don't even want to pray. I got that place to that place with somebody in my family. I was so brokenhearted of fighting the fight and weary. I felt like I couldn't pray anymore. So my God, thank you for my brothers and sisters that will pray for me till I can get back up on my feet again. God is Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides all of our needs. Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals all of our disease. He's there for us. Faith is a process that comes as we take Jesus by the hand. We trust him from trial to trial, today to tomorrow, step after step. We walk with Jesus. So like I said in the beginning, and this is where I'm going to tell my story, it is possible to go to church week after week. It's possible to go from this conference to that conference to this church Bible study to that church Bible study. I've seen it. People just all over the place gaining knowledge, reading this book, you know, just seeking knowledge constantly. But yet they lack the intimacy and of a personal relationship with God that gives them the faith to believe for their own situation. They can't believe for anything. We've got to walk with God and we've got to make this personal. And I'm telling you this because I know it's a lie and a trap of the enemy. Despite having tons of head knowledge, you can lack what you need and have trouble trusting him. And I don't want to be like that. I don't want to struggle to believe that God is not able or he's not willing to move on my behalf. You know, I was thinking about a girlfriend of mine, and she was diagnosed with breast cancer. She was going through it. She had to have a double mastectomy. She was having the chemotherapy. She was so sick and so weak. She said she could not pick up her word. She couldn't pick up her word. She wanted to read the word. She couldn't even pick it up. You know why? That's, that's why it's important to have walked with God. She'd walked with God for many years. She knew God. She knew what God was capable of. And she said, thank God, Heather, that thy word I had hidden in my heart. It wasn't up here. It was down here from walking it out, from exercising it. She had his word in her heart. She stood upon that word. And I tell you what, she is alive and well, cancer-free, just got ordained as a pastor in another church, just got asked to host her own show on Holy Spirit Broadcast Network. God is, she's finishing her first book. I mean, God is using this woman powerfully as a testimony of what God is able to do. And I praise God that she had been through some stuff and had the faith to believe in her God. She said she would literally wake up and hear voices singing about her God and being faithful. It's interesting because I had another friend that went through kidney cancer and she said one time she woke up and it was literally like there was angels in her room singing to her. And she just was not afraid. She could hear the voices of singing worship to God. But, you know, I was thinking about our, our relationships on earth, and many times we can be intimate with somebody, which is what I'm talking about, having an intimate relationship with God, knowing God. But how many of you know as human beings we can have an intimate relationship with somebody but not really know them? Why? Because as humans we have the ability to hold back. You know, I've heard stories of people that have been married forever and then they end up divorced and say, my God, I never even knew that person. Never even knew him. That's because people have secrets. People hold back. Or maybe we think, oh, well, I'm just this lowly person, and God is this 
great, creative, awesome, huge God, and he doesn't have time for me, you know, kind of like meeting the President of the United States or the Queen of England. We would go and maybe expect them to be cordial and shake our hand, very nice to meet you, but not share the secrets of the government with us, not share their intimate details of their private lives with us. We'd expect them to just be cordial. So we can make the mistake of looking at God like that. Well, God, he's so busy, and he's got so much to do, and he doesn't really have time to to do these things with me, but how many of you know God is not like that? He says, no, I'm going to open my heart and I'm going to share everything with you. I'm going to share my heart. I'm going to share my plans with you. I'm going to not only do that, I'm going to take you by the hand and take you on this journey with me. I want you to go with me. I want to know you and I want you to know me. And I'm going to tell you every secret that I have. There's no secrets. God will tell us everything. And he wants us to go on this amazing journey as we trust him. See, even in our relationship, I talk about it all the time how sometimes we feel like we've failed and so God doesn't love us anymore. He's angry with us. But I want you to know there's nothing we can do. God's love is completely trustworthy. It is unconditional and there's nothing that we can do to cause him to turn away from us. The word of God says he will never, ever leave us or forsake us. He's not gonna change his mind on his love for us and he's not gonna change his mind on his plans for us. So what are you facing right now? What are you going through in your life right now? Do you have the faith to believe for your situation? You know, if we've not personally been walking with God, all we have is what we hear about other people's lives. Oh, I know God healed that person, and I heard Pastor Heather talk about this person that was healed, but we have not experienced it ourselves, and that's a very difficult place to be in because if we're not daily walking with God and trusting him, this head knowledge is not going to be enough when the rubber hits the road. It's not going to be enough. I remember, I remember saying that to my husband, like, we got in a serious situation. It's time to believe God. And I said, well, this is where the rubber hits the road. Do we believe what we believe or not? Are we going to quit? Are we going to curl up in a ball and go cry and die? Or are we going to believe God? And honestly, when you get put in a situation like that, it's almost like your back is against the wall. You seriously have no choice but to believe God. But it's much easier if you have a relationship with God. We've got to have that relationship with God. You know, when I first became a Christian, um, I got saved in a church that was very controlling, very, very controlling. You did not do anything without asking the pastor. You did everything that they said. You were to be in church every single service. Don't be late. You're to be in prayer an hour before service. You're to fast when they fast. You're to pray when they pray. You go on an outreach, they'll tell you, you need to go talk to that sister right there. You need to tell her about Jesus. If she needs Jesus, you pray with her. And I remember being like, okay, like I wouldn't even feel led by the Spirit of God. I think she's going to be upset with me, I can tell. And sure enough, she'd be upset with me. And so I literally became like this little robot for Jesus. And I would be in prayer, but it was like I felt everybody watching me and judging me. And so honestly, I don't really think it was any fault of my own, but I became this person that um, was just doing it. It was just works. Because everybody's watching me. Am I in prayer on time? Yes. Am I doing this? Am I, am I witnessing like I'm supposed to? And so my relationship with God became works-based, not relationship-based. And I'll never forget, for those of you that don't know, I'm an RN, and I was working in the hospital. I had so much up here. Oh, man. I knew everything about the gospel up here. I would even street preach sometimes. I knew a lot of stuff about God. But I honestly had not experienced God in that kind of personal way. I would pray, but there was just something lacking there. There was something very wrong in my relationship. And I remember I was telling this lady everything that I knew. She was sick, and she was worried about her finances. And I was like, oh, and I would just tell them so boldly, God loves you. God can heal you. God can help you with your finances. And I'm just ministering all these things. And I heard a voice say, you don't even know what you're talking about. And I immediately dismissed it as the devil. I said, get behind me, devil. But honestly, looking back, I believe it was the Spirit of God. Because God knew all I had was a bunch of head knowledge up here. It was not something that I was working out, walking out in my own life. Remember our opening scripture. If you're going to glory, if you're going to be excited about anything in life, let it be this. That you know God. That you understand him. That you love what he loves. Loving kindness and justice and righteousness on the earth. That means we're going to love people like he loves them. We're going to look different. Our lives are going to change. We're going to walk different. We're going to be moved by injustice. When we see it, we're going to get on our knees and pray, and we're going to open up our mouth, and we're going to be the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus on this earth. Because we know our God. We know his heart. He's put his love in our heart. He speaks to us. He moves us. When he says, move, I'm going to move. When he tells me to talk or walk, I'm going to do it. 
But that's because I'm moved and led by the Spirit of God, not because I'm led by what a man tells me to do or because it's something I feel I should do. We need to listen and be led by the Spirit of God. If you don't know how to do that, it's because you haven't been in his presence. Get in his presence. Sit with him. Listen to him. There's a scripture in Jeremiah 29, 13. It says, you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. And if you look that scripture up and study it out, it says to seek him in prayer and worship. But not just that, it says, and to allow yourself to be sought by God. That indicates a time of intimacy in the presence of God, the very presence of God. We've got to get with Jesus on a regular basis. You know, this reminds me of the story of the woman with the issue of blood, and I know many of you know it, but for those of you that don't, she was a woman that had been bleeding for 12 years. She'd been sick for 12 years, and uh, she'd gone to every doctor. Michelle's just coming up to assist me. She'd gone to every doctor. She'd spent all that she had, but it says, the word of God says, but she did not grow better. In fact, she grew worse. That's a good word for somebody in here. Maybe your situation looks like that, but this woman, all hope was lost outside of Jesus. But it says, as she went after him, that she touched him. And when she touched him, Jesus perceived that power went out of him and, and asked, who was it that touched me? Who touched me? She was healed immediately. Who was it that touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, how can you say that? The crowds are thronging you. The crowds are all up against you. They all want to touch you. They're all touching you, God. All these people are just rubbing up against you. It had nothing to do with physical contact. It didn't have her to do with just reaching out and grabbing him. If that was the case, then everyone would have been healed. But Jesus knew something was different. But if you look that word up, in the Greek, and you study it out. That word means to attach yourself to. It means to cling to. It means to fasten yourself to. She fastened herself to Jesus. She was going to follow him wherever she needed to go. She wasn't going to let go until she got her miracle. Jesus, I'm following you, God. Jesus, I see what you're doing, God. And you know what? She witnessed him. She saw the miracles that he did. She saw the people that he healed. She saw him provide food for those that needed food. And she saw, and therefore she believed. She was able to believe for her situation because she was right there, fastened herself to God. She saw the miracles that he did. Her faith was increased, and she was able to believe. She knew knew her God. She knew what he was capable of doing. She knew nothing was impossible. And yes, it was her faith. It was her faith in the God that she knew. Her faith in the God that she attached herself to. It says to adhere to like glue. That's how I want to be with Jesus. Everywhere I go, he goes with me. I don't go anywhere without Jesus. I'm fastened to him. That means when I'm in a situation where I can get upset, guess what? Jesus is right there. I am going with him and I'm watching him because that. We see the miraculous. When you have Jesus with you and you're being led by the Spirit of God, you see the miraculous. He'll use you. He'll ask you, pray for this person. You'll see people get healed. You'll see him bring joy to others as you open your mouth and you share God's love with someone. You'll see it and you'll witness it and you'll experience it. And like I said, that one time I shared about the girl that I, that I met in Stater Brothers and God just told me to tell her that he loved her. And I just went up to her. I was obedient. I felt uncomfortable at first, but I just was obedient. And I went up and told her, God wants you to know that he loves you. And she broke down crying, could not believe. She said, God told you to tell me that? And I said, yes. He would not let me leave the store until I told you that he loves you. And she began to share her heart and her life and everything she'd been through. I was given the opportunity to pray for her. And when I walked away, as I said before, it felt like the greatest joy that I had ever experienced, the joy that I felt in my heart. But I want you to know that is not just joy. That's not just a human emotion. That is the very presence of God. That is the presence of God as he flows through you and operates through you. And there is nothing, there is no drug that will ever feel like that. When you sense the spirit of God at work in your life, there is nothing greater than that. It's the very presence of God. That woman was healed because she knew nothing was impossible. She walked with God and she saw him at work in her life each and every day. And I tell you what, I don't want to be part of the crowd. 
I don't want to just be part of the crowd that floats from this conference to that conference or follows Jesus but doesn't really get close. You know, you kind of come near, but you don't enter into that place that you need to enter into. I don't want to be part of the crowd. I want to cling to Jesus as if my very life depends on it because guess what? It does. It does. I'm not letting go of him. I want that relationship with God, whatever it takes, and it's going to take time. It's going to take some sacrifice out of our busy lives to take that time to say, God, you're first. When I open my eyes, I want to just start singing praises to him. God, you're number one, Lord, whatever you have for me today, God. When we start our day, many times, you know, Pastor Tom and I are just driving to work, whatever it is, we're like, God, whatever you have for us today, Lord, whatever you want from us, Lord, we're here, we're yours, we're listening, we're right here, and God, you're with us, we know that. So another benefit of walking with Jesus and being in this sort of relationship is it gives us the ability to believe God for today. Many people can't believe God for today, and I've, I've confessed to you before there's been times where I've found myself in that place. Or how about you can believe for everybody else's situation, but you can't believe for your own. That's a very common thing. Oh, let me tell you what the word says. I'm going to tell you, by his stripes you were healed. Oh, let me tell you, by his riches he shall supply all of your needs. I mean, we can preach the word, but then it hits us in the face. And do we have the experience with God to know that he's going to move on our behalf? See, when we find ourselves in that place, we need to question ourselves, how much time have I been spending in the presence of God? Do I have a bunch of head knowledge up here or have I allowed it to drop down into my heart? Have I walked it out? Have I exercised it and grown my faith and seen what God can do and now I'm strong enough to believe for myself, strong enough to come alongside? You know, I was thinking about the weights and people coming up to help me. You know, my girlfriends came up to help lift that arm as I get tired and I thought, I don't want people that haven't been working out. And I don't mean physically. I mean, I don't want people that don't know the word and haven't been exercising their faith. I want some people that have been exercising their faith. I want some people that believe God. I want some people that know what God is capable of and will tell me beyond a shadow of a doubt what my God is able to do to remind me when I feel weak that God is, you know, nothing is impossible with him. And he's not only, like I said, able or capable, he's faithful and he's going to do it. Amen? So we need to question ourselves when we, when we come into that place. But the, the situation or the story in the Bible that came to my mind about having this, this kind of faith to believe for right now, to believe for today, was the story when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. It's found in John chapter 11. And I thought it was interesting because Jesus heard that Martha and Mary were seeking him because Lazarus was sick. But the word of God says that he did not go right away. Lazarus was sick. He had not yet died. Jesus could have rushed over there and saved his life. How many of you know that? But he did not. The reason he did not is Jesus already had a plan in place. And I thought that's a powerful word for someone right here. You may be going through a devastating situation. You may be facing death of somebody in your family. You may be facing financial devastation. You may be facing a child that has just gone so far south. You don't know if they're going to survive tomorrow. I want you to know, whatever you're facing right now, God already has an active plan in place. He is not surprised. He was not surprised that Lazarus was sick. He was not surprised that Lazarus died. But he had a plan. He had a plan. And the word of God says in John eleven fifteen, 15, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And that word loved in the Greek means to love dearly, to be contented with or well pleased with. And I thought again, that indicates relationship. We know for God so loved the world, but this is to be contented with, to be pleased with. He knew them. They knew him. Martha had invited him to her house. They had spent time together. Mary is the one that, that sat at the feet of Jesus to learn from him and to just be with him and to receive that better part. She's the same one that broke the bottle of oil over him and anointed him and, and washed his feet with her hair and her tears. She knew him and she loved him. And Jesus loved her enough that he was going to go and die on that cross and give his life for her. He loved them. In fact, it says when, when he came and he saw them weeping because Lazarus had died, it, that's the only place in the Bible where it says Jesus wept for he loved him. And the Jews even said, wow, look at Jesus loved him. He loved him. I thought about the fact that Martha invited Jesus to her home and I thought, 
is Jesus welcome everywhere we go? You know, some of us, it's like, oh, like Pastor Tom talks about the submarine Christian, you know, he's welcome in the church, hallelujah. But is he welcome in your home? Yeah. But is he welcome at your work with you? Are you showing him off at work? Are you talking about him? Is he there with you when you're getting upset? You know, is he right there with you? Is he welcome with you at the gym when you're working out? Is he welcome with you when you're with your friends hanging out? Is he right there? Are you talking with him? Are you communing with him all the time? Like Pastor Tom, I thought it was so amazing how he opened the service with that. I mean, that was, first I was like, why is he talking about prayer? But that's what we're talking about, talking with God all day long. But you know what? I do want to share something with you. I had gone through a time in my life where I was incredibly stressed out as a Christian, which I didn't understand because I'm like, Lord, before I got saved, I was having major panic attacks, got saved, got completely delivered from that. But then I went through some stressful stuff in my life, and I began to be anxious as a Christian. And what God ended up speaking to me through about five different avenues and people and books and radio and TV, it was amazing. It was like, okay, Lord, I get it, was basically, Heather, I know you talk to me all the time. You talk to me on the way to work. You talk to me while you're at work. You know, I commune with him, but I'm always busy getting ready. Oh, Lord, thank you for this day. Driving to work. Oh, God, thank you. I pray I have a good day today. You know, before we would start our shift at Loma Linda, praise God, it's a Christian hospital. We would we would choose somebody. The chargers would say, Heather, can you pray for the day? Yes, I can. I'd pray. I'd pray as I took care of my patients. Oh, God, help me. You know, whatever. But he said, Heather, that's not enough. You need to rest in my presence. You need to get alone with me. You need to stop. You need to shut everything out. And you need to get alone with me because in my presence is where you find rest and where you're refreshed. I needed to stop and take that time. And I remember he actually talked to me about a Sabbath rest. And I was like, Lord, I, I, I don't have a Sabbath rest. I work on my Sabbath. And he said, I'm not talking about a day. I'm talking about every day. You take some time and you rest in my presence. Not always on the go. We spend too much time sometimes on the go. So they knew him, and in verse 21, Martha said to Jesus, this is the faith for today, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know whatever you ask of God, God will give you. You see, she had that now faith. Jesus, whatever you ask of the Father, I know he'll give it to you. Because she knew her God. She knew. She'd walked with him. She'd seen the miracles. She'd seen the things that Jesus had done. She had no doubt in her heart that he was able to do whatever, whatever that he asked of the Father. And this kind of faith comes only from knowing God. You know, I was thinking about the fact that many of us when we were little were lucky enough to have dads that loved us, that cared for us, that showed us that kind of love. And we had no doubt in our minds that there was no giant that our dad couldn't slay, no bad guy our dad couldn't take care of, nothing that our dad couldn't do. But there was many of us maybe that didn't have a dad. Or maybe you, have a, you had a dad that didn't show you the love of God. I want you to know that we have an Abba Father. We have a Daddy God who is there for you and he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. And his love for you is beyond what you can ever comprehend You'll never comprehend his love. You'll never, no matter what you do, be able to turn his love away from you. There's no enemy that he won't defeat for you. Like I said on Sunday, there's no mountain he won't level for you. There's no sea he won't part for you. He is able to make a river in the middle of the desert. He says in his word that there's no good thing that he won't withhold from you. No good thing will he withhold from you. He loves you, and nothing is impossible with him. Nothing. Nothing, the word of God says, only believe. But how do we believe in the one that we've never experienced? How do we have that kind of faith if all we have is a bunch of head knowledge up here? Only believe. Only believe. You know, I love the story that Tom often tells about a father walking with his son, and he sees that his shoes are worn out. How many of you know that son doesn't even need to ask the dad to buy him new shoes? They're in such close relationship God already knows. Oh, my son, you need shoes. Let me get those for you. He begins to provide without you even asking. I was thinking about Enoch, how the word of God says he walked with God, and then he was not because God took him. That's how closely he walked with God. And, you know, we had a funeral here recently. Um, We lost Brother Augie, and uh, I was thinking about how closely Augie walked with God. He was hit, and he was killed in a car accident, But that morning when he woke up, he spent his time with God like he always did. He got in the presence of God. He opened his devotional and he read his devotional. And then he left his house and just a few blocks away, 
he met God. And I remember when Tom was doing the funeral, he began to cry. He actually was speaking with Gloria, and he said, God just told me that Augie walked with God, and then he was not, for God took him. And I remember he gave a beautiful story of Augie driving in the car, just driving down the street as normal, and then he's like, I've never seen that color before, and why are the streets gold? I believe we can walk that close with God. That you know what, there may be all hell breaking out all around us, but we're so close in our relationship with God, we don't even see it. We see God. We see God's plans. We see God's purposes. We understand his love for us and how great it is, and we understand that he loves us and he's going to take good care of us. You know, many times we struggle with that because we didn't have a father that showed us that. God will never fail you. He'll never disappoint you. He's such a good God, and his love can be trusted, but we've got to learn to trust him by walking out our faith day after day after day. Amen? Praise God. Let's give God some praise if you got something from Jesus. Amen. Come on.